Welcome back. This is Chris, my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome. Um, the date today is August 13th, Year of Our Savior, 2018. And the title of this video is The Firmament Question Mark Part 4. The Firmament Question Mark Part 4. And so we are learning about when we understand biblical cosmology, then we can start to see what's going on because excuse me, it would be very naive for people to, if you do not understand your enemy, folks, you're going to get nailed. See, the simple get nailed. God says, be wise as serpent, gentle as a dove. And he says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish for lack of science. My people perish for lack of doctrine, for truly understanding this word of God. So I have read over Genesis a thousand times and never got it mm -hmm. because I was programmed and so I was able it took me a process of being deprogrammed so it's about peeling back the layers of unbelief that has been planted in there subconsciously My child. yeah we're, we're just not aware of these things so I'm not trying to be insensitive or anything but I'm also here to say it is what it is so we learned about planet is not something firm up. It's not something solid or firm. It is a luminous body. It's mm -hmm. a celestial being. It's a wandering star. So we learned about that. That's why you have a planetarium. You've ever been to a planetarium? What is what is the what is it shaped like? It's shaped like the firmament, right? It's shaped like a dome or vault or arch of the sky. Arch. Like where we get the word higher arch or arc, architect, architecture, arch, archy, prime. That's what it means. Chief rulers, what that means. And so we learn about planetary, means wandering. And ast aster, asteroid is, aster means star. Oh no, it's, you know, asteroids or rocks floating through, you know, no, no, no. It's a star, folks. That's what it is. That's what that word means. An aster, an asteroid. So then we have planet stricken. We learned about planet stricken and within the definition of planet stricken is panic stricken. And panic stricken is from pan, which is what? The Greek god of forests, pastures and flocks. And that pan figure is what was in the lion, witch, and wardrobe. Mm -hmm. I forgot what his name was. Thomas. Timas. Tomas. Isn't that what it was? Well, that sounds right. Tomas. Tomas. Yeah. And he was a real nice guy and all this. But the wandering star, the wandering, those that follow the wandering stars, those that worship the host of heaven, those that worship Lucifer, those that worship a hierarchy or a division of angels, the Baal priest, they have hidden knowledge from us and given us a counterfeit, a deception. Mm -hmm. And so from the wandering, wander is where you get the word wand, right? A slender staff carried in a procession. Verge, a slender rod used by conjurers and magicians. Wanderer wand. So what is this? This is a connection from heaven to earth. This is a connection between the terrestrial and the celestial. As above, so below, right? The maxim. So we see here. So then you have what? A slender rod. Then you, where you get the holly, right? The holly is where the wood that you make for wands. And you have holly wood, right? Mm -hmm. um, holly tree. Favorite source of magic, right? Then you have sorcery, wands. Then you have hell, H-E-L, right? Capital H-E-L or Mother Holy, H-O-L-L-E. So now we have a connection of H-O-L-L-E to H-E-L. That's capital H-E-L. All right? And that's in the Druids for tree worshipers. That was the goddess of the dead and queen of the underworld in Norse mythology. Then right next to that you have Heli, right? And Helio, which is sun. This is a very complex system, all right? 
And so, yeah, the different cultures, but what do they have? They have the mother goddess worship, which started with Eve, right? Because what did Adam say in Genesis 3, I believe, verse 20? Genesis 3, verse 20, it talked about Eve. What did Adam say? You're Eve, the mother of all living. Right? The mother. And that's where you get, in the Latin, you get mater, mat, matra, meter. Right? That's where you have the alma mater. That means mother. So you have the alma mater. That's what, I saw, uh, that's what was sung when I attended a graduation. Um, my, uh, my niece was graduating from college and they sung the Alma Mater. I didn't sing it, but they sang it. And it was praise the mother. Where does that come from? Well, ultimately that comes from Eve. Adam named her Eve. I don't know, maybe after evening, evening in the morning were the first day, or maybe it was after evil, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because he was brought down because of that. I don't know. Good study. But when we get into Eve, the word Eve is where we get evening, we get uh, evening uh, prayer, uh, we get into evening star, which is Venus. Venus is also known as the evening star. Then we get into the Vespers and into the Vesta, the goddess of the hearth. And that's where you get in the vestments, the clothing of the clergy, because we're dealing with the hierarchy, right? And that means to make sacred an arch, the firmament. We're talking about all this stuff when we understand biblical cosmology. So, talking about, then we have Hell or Holly, Mother Holly, Heli or Helios, Son. Then you have Helios, the Sun God in Greek mythology. And that's where you get the word heliocentrism. So, most people today believe they're rotating around Helios. Oh yeah, man, I'm uh, third rock from the sun. We're spinning around yeah. Helios. We're, it's, it's heliocentrism. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> well, now you know. Words have meaning. It should be like, whoa, whoa, wait, I'm third rock from the sun. Mercury is a pagan god. Venus is a pagan goddess. And Mars. And then I have these wandering stars. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why, if I'm going to the bathroom in a restroom, in a restaurant, right? You go and you see the Mars symbol and the Venus symbol. Well, that's wandering stars mm -hmm. used to identify male and female. <coughs> Is that significant? Well, that's the planets, the wandering stars, the wand, the magic, the sorcery. This is all tied in. This is the mystery schools. This is what the Baal priests do. And it is actual legitimate power. Idolatry. It is idolatry. That's why you take on the living word of God except the free gift. The atoning blood of Jesus has power. Because remember at the very end of Matthew 28, said all power is given to where? In heaven and in earth to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Heaven and earth. No, oh, we're uh, spinning on a ball through infinite galaxies due to the Big Bang. Due to Helios, man. Hey, what's up? What's up, Helios? No, sorry. Folks, the only way for you to make a decision is when you're informed. Otherwise, you don't know what you don't know. It's not fair. It's unrighteous. It's wrong. And you have people today that have been perpetuating lies and part of this system. And all we're doing is saying, the truth shall set you free. When you start to understand God's cosmology, things change, folks. So learning about sorcery, right? Wanderer. Well, this is about sun worship. I mean, Stephen Red in the last few um, videos, we're talking about, look it up, folks. Worshipping the host of heaven. Mm -hmm. 
Israelites worship the host of heaven. God didn't like it. He says, love me with all your heart. Don't bring any pagan gods in heaven above and earth beneath or in the waters underneath the earth. Waters underneath the earth. I was talking to a, a young lady who was a college graduate. She goes, well, I thought there was molten, uh, what is it? Iron or something yeah. at the core? Iron ore, yeah. Iron ore. And I'm like, um, that's a theory. Yeah. I go, but there is water underneath the earth according to the word of God. That was the face of the deep mentioned in Genesis 1, verse 2. And the deep cola project, which is, I believe, in Russia, they only went down 12 kilometers, which is 8 miles. And they said it's actually porous, which means that there's it's not harder and harder the deeper you go. One of the guys said, well, what do you know about the earth? Everything that we know has been was wrong. Yeah, that's basically. what he said. Yeah. Everything that we know or we've been told about about the, the earth is wrong. That's an honest statement. Yeah. He was doing a scientific experiment. Yep. It lasted 20 years. <laughs> wow. Well, so, wander. What does wanderer mean? Oh, man, I want the wand. I want to follow the wandering stars. What does wander mean? It means to move about without a fixed course. Did not God finish everything? The heavens and the earth were completed? Yep. Genesis chapter 2 to wander to move about without a fixed course to deviate stray to go astray morally err to stray in thought vagary vagabond wandering unsettled irresponsible tramp caprice to take one direction or another without conscious intent or control Stray from a path, place, or companions. Deviate in conduct, conduct belief, etc. Err, to go astray. Uh, speak confusedly or incoherent. A, parental, a person of a, with a mental disorder or cognitive impairment. To move about or walk in a seamlessly aimless or random manner. To travel about on or through. Um, mechanics, the drift. Uh, are now mechanics the drift of a gyroscope or similar device so we range stroll saunter swerve veer ramble or rave now it's not very it's not a good thing folks so <laughs> we don't want a wand and we don't want no. to be participating in sorcery um, we don't want to be following the, the the stars but if you you're following the wandering stars if you're believing the heliocentric construct because you're following the wandering stars. You think you're rotating around with these wandering stars. The wandering stars determines your cosmology. Is that a problem? And then it's like, then you become panic stricken, which is also planet stricken, which is linked to pan, panic stricken. All this is dealing with the occult, folks, as you can see. So then we get into, what is this? This is basically the sin. Sinning against the Most High. It's a sin. You're worshiping the host of heaven. Is that a sin? Yes. God wants you to love him with all your heart, to have no other gods, no other idols before him. Pastor literally brought an idol, an idol worship into his congregation. And he says people who don't believe this are stupid. Wow. May God have mercy on your soul. All right. Sin is an offense against God, a misdeed, a fault, a transgression against the law of God. 1 John 3, verse 12. So planetesimal, we're learning at, means planet plus esimal, as in infinitesimal, subject to no limitation or external determination. Endless, infinitesimal cal calcus or calculus. You see where this is going? Oh man, it's the planets and it's planetesimal. It's solid planet rocks that are esimal, as in infinitesimal. As in, no limitation, external determination, endless calculus. Thus we have the astro-priests coming in with their astro 
astronomical math. They're star math and it's way too hard for anybody to comprehend. So therefore, we bow down in obeisance and kneel before our Christ, before our mediators. Because that's what it's all about. That's what priest means. Priest means they're the mediator. They have the power. Hierarchy. Higher means to make sacred. They have the power as mediators to make things sacred. And your job is to what? Either believe God's word or be the dumb laity and just say, real intelligence is not to question us. But you're stupid if you believe in biblical cosmology. <laughs> Praise God. You believe in flat earth. I believe in biblical creationism. Get into the word of God. The moon is a light. Prove, prove the word of God wrong. Yeah. Study to show yourself approved. So this is what we're seeing with plan, planetesimal, right? The mathematical methods comprising differential and integral calculus a method of computation or calculation and a special symbolic notations. They have a system of symbols. And we go, we'll just believe whatever you say, right? You're our mediators. You're our priests. You're our middle position. You're our Christ. Subconsciously, that's what we follow. That's what I want. Sacerdotalism. Sacerdotalism and priest. Look it up. Saying the same thing. Yeah. All right. Solid, folks. So now we're going, oh no, now a planet is not a star anymore. It's not the wandering. Well, they believe that, but they put another perception and we go, oh no. Now, a planet is solid and it's infinitesimal in an infinite vacuum that's ever expanding. And then we go, yeah, man, that's solid. It's in, you know, and that's having an interior filled with matter, compact, three dimensional, right? That's where you would get firm, right? So a planet is firm, right? According to these, these priests, but the firmament in the Bible coming from the word firm is not firm, right? It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So, when you learn the meanings of words, the vocabulary of the English language, the vocabulary of biblical modern English, it empowers you. It does. Because pastors will fall into the trap because they're trapped. And they have to mold words to fit into their heliocentric construct. All right, firmament. All right, so we're seeing here one of the numerous small, solid heavenly bodies that may have existed at an earlier stage of the development of the solar systems. So now we're all learning about Baal science. This is idolatrous worship. Oh man, way back when, now planet becomes firm. It's like terra firma. It's solid. It's a solid heavenly body. Does that make sense to you? A solid heavenly body? Heaven is in heaven and a body is a celestial body which is a light according to the word of God. I can see the lights at night. You know why? Because they're a light. I can see the moon because it's a light. And then the Middle English, the origin of firmaments, 1250 to 1300 Middle English, late Latin firmamentum, sky, Latin for support, prop, stay, equivalent to firma, to strengthen, to support. See, firm plus mentum, which is meant. Yeah. It's, you know. Yeah, uh, firm. It's, it's firm. The first it's part hard. of it is it's firm. And, and, and we can break down what firm is because I'm going to read it right now for those who want to understand what the firmament is. What Stephen read was profound. It's absolutely 100% true because firmament comes from the word firm. 
firm means securely or solidly fixed in place. Mm -hmm. Firm or solid structure from the support or strengthening. 1B, solid. So it implies such compactness and coherence and often elasticity of substance as to resist pulling, distorting, pressing. It connotes stability and resoluteness. Hard implies impenetrability. It's impenetrable. You can't get through it. Good luck firing a rocket through it. What a joke. They tried it in Operation Fishbowl and Operation Dominic. They failed mm -hmm. because it's impenetrable. And nearly complete but inelastic resistance to pressure or tension. Solid implies a texture of uniform density. Yes, we're talking about density. Something as three-dimensional, it's dense. And that's really what the word gravis, forming the word gravity is. It is weight or density. Mm -hmm. It is a substance. It has weight. All right, but I'm getting ahead of myself so as to not only be firm, but heavy. So firmament means firm or heavy, and heavy, it comes from heave. Heave is where you get the word heaven. Might recognize that word, heaven. Because in the beginning, God created heaven, and heaven equals the firmament. Firmament, Latin firmus from firmare, the vault or arch, arch or architecture of the sky, heavens, obsolete basis foundation. Obsolete means it's a very ancient word, but we, we don't like to use that word anymore. It's the basis or foundation. Did you know the heaven provides a foundation for us? Mm -hmm. The foundation for the earth? That's in the, in the Vulgate, translate Greek sternoma, firm or solid structure, which translated Hebrew rakia, a word used both the vault of the sky and the floor of the earth in the Old Testament. Probably literally expands from raka to spread out, but in the Syriac meaning to make firm or solid. Firm or solid. So what Satan says, he says, no, 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 no. That's not firm. Even though it says firm, it's not firm, but planet which is not firm that's firm they try to say oh that's an erroneous uh, in translation right. or mistranslation yeah. no satan changes the meanings yep. of words and if you follow satan's changing the meanings of word guess what you're following mm -hmm. doctrines of devils but when you understand the meaning of words it empowers you so we have the plantesimal hypothesis right we talked about that last time is a hypothesis in Astronomy, which is the study of the stars, by the way, that's where you get astro, asteroid, astronomy, it's referring to the study of the stars. Mm -hmm. The planets have evolved. Now we're getting into evolution. You go, I don't believe in evolution. I say, yes, you do, if you believe in heliocentrism, because you believe that planet is terra firma, it's solid. Right. All right. Planets have evolved by aggregation. I'm like, what the heck does aggregation mean? Well, aggregation means formed by the collection of units or particles into a body mass or amount. So the planets are evolving by the dust particles coming together and forming a firma. <laughs> wow! Then we must... Hey, isn't that what the... Uh, uh, physicists are saying, right, that hate God, say you don't need God, they say, don't thank Jesus, thank the stars, yeah. because you're created by stardust. And what's the one guy, the guy that wears the bow tie, what's his name? Um, anyway, he's going, well, we're related to, and this is your physicist, folks, that you want to go to, and you go, everybody knows, science, the physicists have clearly shown that, um, we operate by heliocentrism. We're rotating around the sun. Well, they're saying that we're related to Martians because of moon dust. No, Dawkins, I mean, Mars dust. Dawkins is one of them, but I can't really think yeah, of that. Yeah, that guy, I think it's Niall. Yeah, uh, yeah whatever it is. Kind of an interesting looking fella. Um, so, 
Look at how things are changing. See, Satan builds his own doctrine using words, but changing the meaning of them. And if you're deceived, you don't mean anything by it, but you end up embracing doctrines of devils and preaching them. Mm -hmm. Everything's about deception. Religions are about deception. You have people go, well, there's some really wonderful people in there. Yes, there are. They believe with all their heart, and it's so sad because they're deceived. And so we're saying, come out of her is a message of love. Love the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the one true light. Mm -hmm. So learning about the plantesimal hypothesis is about evolution and aggregation. Oh, the accumulation of the dust, stardust into some planetoid asteroid terra firma surface and then that's what we got going on out there but somehow we can see it through their fancy um, telescopes now evolve what does evolve mean evolve means a process of change in a certain direction in which the whole universe is a progression of interrelated phenomena so hey through heliocentrism Big Bang and evolution, man, we're getting new stars being formed. Did you know a new sun was formed, isn't it? Isn't that what the Word of God says? Right, right there in Genesis 2, verse 1. Wait a minute. It says something completely opposite. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. What does finished mean? Done. It means complete. No, no, is it evolution? Aren't we still evolving? Aren't, oh man, we just, oh man, a new sun and a new star came into being, right? And all the host of them were finished. And all the host of them were finished. Thank you. Made me fit. I mean, I almost didn't finish it. Isn't this fascinating learning about biblical cosmology? It's incredible, folks. The power of understanding the Word of God will change your life. Come to the true light understand true astronomy through God's Word. Accept no substitute. God bless you. Bye.